It's Joey for Witches of the Moon, a Tuesday host, and this week's subject is discussing some of the pagan paths, different approaches to the pagan way of, of life, of worship, of spirituality. Now, seeing as I couldn't do my video last week because of stress and other issues, some of that might creep in a little bit this week, sort of learning from other people and... and defining your path. So I only feel that I should really touch on specifically the the paths in which I have explored. I'm going to do that a little bit later on. I'm going to talk a, li a little bit broader terms to start with about how I feel about this subject and then I'll talk a little bit more about the paths in which I have experienced and for the reference of that I started off exploring Wicca. I then became quite eclectic and did not have a very set path and then in more recent times I became a Celtic witch which is how I define myself and my path now. So to start off with, I thought we'd talk in broad terms about paths within the pagan umbrella. Pagan is often used as an overarching term for a lot of different ways of approaching similar ideas in general. Um, some of the things which are called pagans, I, paganism, I wouldn't actually agree with. Anything which draws from other religions, to me, as in, and is in the primary dogma, perhaps the primary figures. Um, that to me is more a branch of whatever spiritual path that is. So for someone who is calling themselves perhaps a Christian witch or whatever, that would be a branch of that religion to me, but I don't follow that personally, so I don't feel that I can give a really good explanation of all of that. What I can feel that I can say is that we are all, no matter what spiritual path we are walking, we are all on a journey, all on our own personal journey to spiritual enlightenment, to better understand the ways of godhood, of source, of goddesshood, however you choose to view spiritual energy. We are all seeking better understanding. There are very broad definitions of what a pagan is, of what a witch is, and there will be arguments about this, that and the other. And I've, I am so hesitant even talking about this because to me a path is individual and personal and these sort of labels and definitions are just ways of putting us all in a box and to be perfectly honest it doesn't sit very well with me. We all often have these labels for identification purposes because it becomes easier it's easier for people to understand what you are exploring if you have a title for it. And a lot of people get really frustrated about being labelled Wiccan when they're not, which always sort of baffles me slightly because at least people are trying to understand, you know. Um, people are, are a little bit more informed about what Wicca is because that's a little bit more mainstream than the term which, and I was musing over ideas of identity a couple of weeks ago, thinking, you know, 
we often reclaim the word witch because we feel now that we can embrace the term and make it into something beautiful after years of the term being used as a negative accusation, as a negative stereotype. It's very similar to how people reclaim words that used to be really racist and incorporate them into their colloquial language because it then diffuses the power of the word for someone else to use it against them. So I was musing about how we have reincorporated the word witch to give it a more beautiful meaning but then on another level it seems so restrictive to define ourselves in terms of this is this, this is this, this is this. Our path is entirely personal, how we see, feel, think, believe, walk our own path is entirely up to us and sometimes I think having very strict ideas of what path you will is really restrictive and what if you outgrow something and that's one of the reasons I was very drawn to the sort of pagan umbrella of spirituality in the first place because it allowed you to explore your own ideas it allowed you to grow and evolve and if you outgrew something and it was no longer for you you could basically be the butterfly and you could transform yourself from where you were to who you're going to be through sort of the catalyst, the cocoon of knowledge, of understanding, of meditation, of research and of becoming who you want to be and becoming a better person. I don't really think it matters which path you follow. I think it matters how you follow it. What, what ideals you are taking with you, how you are treating other people, how you are interacting with the world around you, how you have treated your animals, how you interact with the world and nature and whether you know you're being destructive or whether you're trying to provide or whether you're giving back to the world it through energy, even if you just start to make different changes in your lifestyle whereby you help the world around you. And it's not about flinging money at a problem, it's about actually becoming invested and starting to understand that the same energies flow through every single thing on the planet. They, through, they flow through animals, the world, and each other. How we choose to then embrace those ideas is entirely up to us. It is what we feel comfortable with, how we react, how we live and that is our own personal responsibility as far as I'm concerned. I think the defining of or this, that and the other path is largely unnecessary for a, a lot. Once you reach a certain point and you've read around a lot then you, you know the ideas that that flow from certain places and I enjoy reading about other religions and other spiritual paths and seeing where the similarities are and a path that I want to be researching and I've, I keep coming back to meaning to research it and see where things go forward from there is the path of Shinto in the Japanese religion obviously I have been embracing my Kitsune energy and I really don't need any more pronunciation on here, please. None of that. I've had enough, quite enough of that as it is. Um, because I've embraced that side of me now, it then makes sense to then explore the Shinto belief system such as it is. And it's always been something I've been very, very drawn to reading about. Would that me mean I was not a Celtic witch anymore? No, um, absolutely not that would not affect where I feel I am right now in my, my path. So I'm going to talk a little bit more then about the paths which I have experienced and why and then grown and moved and, and whatever. So I started off in Wicca and a lot of people will and 
it's because of how freely available the information is now on Wicca. There are probably more Wiccan books than there are on any other pagan path, spiritual path, at a guess. Um, I'm, th I'm pretty safe in that guess, so I have a lot of them still now. I and there is a lot about the Wiccan path which I carry with me to this day and it's opened up my eyes to a new way of living, a new spiritual path. It has some incredibly beautiful aspects. Again there are some aspects which I don't agree with and some of the gardener stuff is a little bit weird for me and I, I sort of pulled away from that and then again some of it I incorporate even now and have no qualms about doing so. Wheel, the wheel of the year is the, the major one and I've had people say you know oh, you, if you're not Wiccan you can't celebrate the wheel of the year and I turn around and go well that's ridiculous because a the wheel of the year is rooted in history and the evolution of different festivals from all over the place four of which are Celtic by the way and um, if I choose to incorporate that into my path, I shouldn't be hindered to do so because I don't follow that path strictly. I've never enjoyed the idea that you are not allowed to follow that path and that path, and you know, you have to be born to that path, and I, I think that's ridiculous. It's like, well, you don't know where, you don't have to be born from a, well, in my, you know, in my circumstances, do I have to have Celtic ancestors to be able to follow the Celtic path? Do I have to live in a, a more Celtic, inverted commas, country to follow a Celtic path? No, absolutely not as far as I'm concerned. That sort of thing is just judgmental, narrow-minded nonsense. Um, I don't really know where my ancestors all came from. I have ideas here and there but because I don't have a relationship and don't wish to have a relationship with my family for the most part, my blood family anyway, I don't know these things. I'm, I haven't got the money to go pursuing family trees in particular and moreover it doesn't make a huge amount of difference to me in my spiritual path. I might be interested from a history point of view for sure but uh, as a part of a spiritual path, my spiritual path is where my soul has been drawn to and that is the path in which I will follow. It doesn't follow that because I'm from a certain place or a certain family or a certain... I don't believe in any of that and there are people that do and, you know, more power to you, whatever you, you believe. But I believe that the soul journeys by itself and can't be dictated to by these sort of human boundaries of lineage or creed or skin colour. I think it just becomes risky business to tell somebody that you can or cannot follow a certain path. I don't follow anything that dictates that specifically, so again, this is just my way of interpreting and feeling out different paths. I don't know an awful lot about certain paths and maybe someday I will do more research on it, but um, for the time being I'm happy pursuing um, my interest in the Celtic path, the Celtic way, and Shinto will be the other one. So after I sort of outgrew Wicca, naturally progressed, I, I became quite eclectic for a while and I just didn't have a label for myself. If anyone would ask, I would say eclectic because I just didn't have an answer. It wasn't that I was really taking things from here, there and everywhere, it was that I worked with God and Goddess in the abstract, I followed the Wheel of the Year and then I sort of followed everything in just very broad terms. I didn't follow a specific path, I didn't feel the need to. And only when I felt the need to know who my matron goddess was did the Morrigan start hinting. I mean she'd been hinting my entire life and when I look back in hindsight I see snips of information from throughout my life where I, it's a hint. You know, the Book of Shadows that I bought very early on was the Triquetta and on the front and one of the very first altar cloths I ever bought had that on it as well. And I just didn't know about it until more recent times when I opened up and embraced that information. So, for the time being, I probably, well, 
for life now because the Morrigan is that way. Uh, I'm following the Celtic path. The Celtic tradition is basically a aspect of the pagan religion which honours Celtic gods and ways of life broadly speaking. Uh, the Celtic tradition is often very difficult because it was largely oral so we only have snippets of information from historical sources which might not always be accurate. I often sort of try and discuss the fact that we have to embrace the modern as well as the old which is something a lot of pagans sometimes forget you know that we want to embrace the old ways which is fine but you have to have awareness for where we are now we've been put in this time this part of history now for a reason to embrace things that are around us to embrace what is available to us now to talk and discuss with what we have available to us now not as things were and i you know when you hear arguments about people saying well we should live as medieval which is should live, blah, blah, blah. and I feel like we're saying if we were supposed to have lived as medieval which is inverted commas because that's even arguable within itself whether they were witches or not if we were supposed to live like that we would have been living back then not, not right now and we should embrace everything that we can do now to make this a better time for us for the earth and for future generations that being said, then you can't embrace the Celtic way of life the way the Celts would have. We can't go cattle raiding. <laughs> we can't go raiding our neighbours. We can't go, you know, proving ourselves in the heat of killing our neighbours because we would end up in prison. So it's not the same time. It's not the same value system. And we have to accept that and sort of search for the modern interpretation of what it means to follow a Celtic path or follow any path in whichever path that you most feel drawn to. There are many many Celtic gods and obviously I follow the Morrigan and therefore the, the Morrigan myths and mythos and stories and tales and images are what interest me. I don't feel the need to go into those into great depth in videos like this because again these are very broad videos and if I discuss that in very... I'm not going to tell anybody what they should do, where they should get the information, well, because I'm then basically hindering your path. Um, <clears throat> and I don't want to hinder anybody's path in that whatsoever. It's about exploring, it's about investigating, it's about researching, it's about seeing where your soul calls you, where your heart lies, where you feel right. There are many, many branches of paganism and there are many, many gods and things and it's up to the individual to research, interpret and honour their way of life. A lot of the pagan paths have a lot in common with honouring the earth. And I would argue that only earth-based spiritual paths are truly pagan. People might argue against that and that's entirely up to them, but to have a reverence for nature and the world around us is what I consider to be a witch, to be a pagan, however you wish to define your path. I don't think I can say any more than this because I don't know a huge... I don't know enough to... I can tell you an overview of a lot of different paths, but I don't want to because it's not up to me to help anybody discover where their heart lies. That is a personal responsibility. And all you can do is read, research and follow your heart to find the different traditions in which you feel most at home. So that's going to be it for this video today and many blessings.